To Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 16. Why don't you drink your coffee, Scout? I thought Mr. Cunningham was a friend of ours. You told me a long time ago he was. He still is. But last night he wanted to hurt you. Mr. Cunningham's basically a good man. He was part of a mob last night, but he was still a man. Every mob in every little southern town is always made up of people you know. Doesn't say much for them, does it? I'll say not. So it took an eight-year-old child to bring him to their senses. You children last night made Walter Cunningham stand in my shoes for a minute. That was enough. First day Walter comes back to school be his last. You will not touch him. I don't want either of you bearing a grudge about this thing, no matter what happens. You see, don't you? What comes to things like this? Don't say I haven't told you. I'd never say that. There's a day ahead, so excuse me. Jem, I don't want you and Scout downtown today, please. Don't see how Mr. Raymond stays in the saddle. How can you stand to get drunk for eight in the morning? You going to the courthouse this morning, Miss Monty? I am not. I have no business with the court this morning. Aren't you going down to watch? I am not. It's morbid watching a poor devil on trial for his life. Look at all those folks. It's like a Roman carnival. Um, um, um. Look at all those folks. You'd think Williams, Jen, and Brian was speaking. And where are you going, Stephanie? To the Jitney Jungle. I've never seen you wear a hat to the Jitney Jungle before, Stephanie. Well, I thought I might just look in at the courthouse to see what Atticus is up to. Better be careful it doesn't hand you a subpoena. We held off until noon when Atticus came home to dinner and said they'd spent the morning picking the jury. After dinner, we stopped by for dill and went to town. It was a gala occasion. Jim, he's drinking out of a sack. How does he keep what's in it in it? Mr. Raymond, he's got a Coca-Cola bottle full of whiskey in there. That's so as not to accept the ladies. Why is he sitting with the colored folks? Always does. He likes them better than he likes us, I reckon. He's got a colored woman and all sorts of mixed chillin'. He doesn't look like trash. He's not. He owns all one side of the riverbank down there, and he's from a real old family to boot. Then why does he do like that? That's just his way. Jim, what's a mixed child? Half white, half colored. Colored folks won't have them because they're half white, and white folks won't have them because they're colored. Yonder's one of them. How can you tell? He looks black to me. You can't sometimes, not unless you know who they are. Well, how do you know we ain't Negroes? Uncle Jack fin Finch says we really don't know. He says as far as he can track back the Finches, we ain't. But for all he knows, we might have come straight out of Ethiopia during the Old Testament. Well, if we came out during the Old Testament, it's too long ago to matter. That's what I thought. But around here, once you have a drop of Negro blood, that makes you all black. We knew there was a crowd, but we had not bargained for the multitudes in the first floor hallway. Can't y'all get in? Hey, Reverend, no, nah, there ain't a space left. Do y'all reckon it'd be all right if you came up to the balcony with me? Gosh, yes. The color balcony ran along three walls of the courthouse, like a second-story veranda, and from it we could see everything.